Hello, welcome to Soundbridge. In this video, we wanted to show you some of the main features in our plugin called Record. Record is an arpeggiator, and as such, it's a MIDI effect, so you can load it where you can drop MIDI effects in Soundbridge. I'm just going to quickly tell you about its main functionality and show you some of the examples. The whole button holds all the incoming notes indefinitely. Style combo box selects the style of the arpeggiated sequence. Styles in record are various and you can just create an arpeggio, change through them and see how it reacts. If you want to know the details about all the various styles in record, they're all available in the manual, which you can reach by clicking the logo right here. The key combo box transposes the notes down to the closest note of the scale you selected for all the incoming notes. If I select chromatic, all the notes I sent to this record are gonna be just used for the arpeggio. But if I select a specific scale right here as let's say F sharp minor, all the notes that I sent into record that don't belong to F sharp minor are going to be transposed down to the closest note that actually does belong to that scale. This means that if you're using a scale like that for your live performance, there is no way you can make an error. The rate is the speed of the arpeggiator's playback. And it can be in musical divisions like this, or it can be in milliseconds as well. I'll just get it back to 1 16th note. And the sync button is what decides if it's actually gonna be synced to the song or if it's gonna be in milliseconds. The gate controls the length of the notes. It is expressed as the percentage of the actual rate sync timing. The repetitions knob controls how many arpeggiator cycles get transposed according to the distance parameter amount. The distance sets how many semitones to transpose the notes on every repetition, so we can go up or down in semitones. Shift will shift the entire arpeggiator sequence by a certain number of steps, meaning that the first note, like right now, is going to be omitted, start from the second, and so forth. So you could move through that sequence of arpeggiation forward and backward in steps, selecting with which step we want to actually start the arpeggiation. The swing sets the percentage of swing added to this arpeggiation sequence, and that brings us to the re-trigger section. When it is off, the sequence is not going to be re-triggered. When it's set to beat, we can set a synced time at which the arpeggiator is going to restart each time, meaning that if I set it to, let's say, 1 8th note, it means that every 1 8th note, the arpeggiation sequence is going to restart from the beginning. If I select note, it means that every time a new note is introduced, the arpeggiation sequence is going to restart. Now we have this repeats knob and it determines how many times the actual sequence is going to repeat before it stops altogether. The last couple of parameters are all related to the velocity. Enabling the velocity button enables the velocity feature altogether. It applies a linear progression to the velocity parameter from the actual velocity value that the input nodes have to the target value right here. And that linear progression is going to happen over this time set by the decay parameter. If we enable the retrigger option, it will retrigger together with the retrigger functionality that we have and just mentioned down below. Now, let me show you some of the examples. I don't need to retrigger the velocity, but I could retrigger the sequence itself. And let's say that would happen every bar. And I want it to happen, let's say once or twice. Let's see. What I will do is draw in some notes right here in that length. So the first thing I want to do is draw in a chord, which is going to coincide with the pitch of my song. The song I have is in F sharp. Let's start off a little bit lower like this, adding the F sharp zero. Then I'll add the A, C sharp, and again, F sharp. That's my first chord. Now, those notes are going to get into record, which I can disable and just show you what it sounds like without it. I'll solo the channel. Now, when those notes are fed into record, this is what comes out. And I can record the output so you can see what that looks like. And of course, all of that happened according to the rules that we have set in record right here. So. Since my song does have swing, I want to add some swing to it, 30%, as much as my song has. And let me try to lower the velocity of these notes. So I'll select all of these, lower the velocity down. And now when I play it, the velocity is going to progressively go up. See that? 
once and then another time and it also has the swing if i go to swing of 30 percent you see it coincides right there of course my gate is at 80 percent i can lower it down or leave it at let's say whatever it was 88 90 i do have one repetition and the distance is 12 semitones so you can see that this one arpeggiation sequence of the four notes happens again and it's just transposed 12 semitones up you can see that the velocity has a linear progression upwards from whatever velocity is in our notes this one and it actually goes up to reach this value i did select inside of record the key of my song so if i just you know copy these notes just like that uh, let me move them a bit and i'll just transpose them up twice now not all of these notes resulting ones are actually in the scale of f sharp minor but they will sound so let me delete this so you can see what it looks like so i'll record whatever comes out and let me show you what happened right here let's compare whatever notes we have right here so we have a g sharp a b a d sharp and a g sharp if we go into notes you will see that it is a g sharp a b and now a d not a d sharp and then a g sharp again so one of the notes as you can see was augmented this was transposed down to actually follow the rules of the scale so whatever i play right here it's always going to be in scale i don't have to worry about it now again let me go back and add some more chords i think i'll just copy this one again right here and i think i'll do that again right there and let's just move it up a tiny bit like this and just move some notes around honestly i'm just gonna do this freestyling just like that and see what it sounds like nice i think it's going to fit my song i want to add some more notes right here so i want to repeat this as well just like that one note up just like that maybe lower the velocity of course again just like that and i would like to have something here in the ending too so i'm just going to take these notes and repeat those let's try that with the whole song and i will record the output of record so you can see the notes that happen i can repeat this twice so we can loop That's really nice. And let me show you how I can just change this up. So maybe we can move this to 1 32nd of a note and see what that sounds like. Let's try it. Can delete this. Let's try it again. We can even let it repeat twice. actually like this and let me play the whole song for you at the end and if you want to know more details about record as i said you can always just click the logo and get to its manual have fun using record mm -hmm.